Hey guys, Jessica Reffin here with Dalton Sargent, driver of the number 25 Chevrolet in the Camping World Truck Series. But you've been doing a lot away from the racetrack right now. So tell me a little bit about what you've been doing. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, unfortunately, we've had like a five week span of, uh, you know, a pretty long break right now in the Camping World Truck Series. So, um, you know, I just try and stay as busy as I can. I, I like to travel. I like to do uh, as much cool stuff as I can, you know. I guess being a race car driver, it kind of makes me like an, an adrenaline junkie, you could kind of say. So uh, I shot up to, uh, to British Columbia, uh, up in Canada, uh, decided to go snowboarding up there. I think I probably uh, got in a little bit over my head at first. <laughs> um, you know, I've been snowboarding in the past and everything, been to some cool places, you know, been out to Colorado and Utah, but nothing as serious as what I went to in British Columbia. The snow was uh, like knee deep. It was, you know, pretty difficult and, you know, I was only there for a couple days and uh, luckily I was around a bunch of professionals from X Games gold medalists to uh, U.S. Uh, Olympic team members and stuff. So I uh, was able to learn a lot from them. That was pretty cool. But, you know, at first I was, I jumped in and I was like, wow, I might be a little bit over my head here. You know, you get flown in on a helicopter to this place and uh, you're on top of a mountain in the middle of nowhere. You're trying to snowboard through trees and, and waist high powder and it's just uh it was something that was pretty crazy you know at first i was like kind of put in a point to where it was almost like man i don't know if i can do this and luckily i was around you know so many great people that i was able to kind of learn and um you know it kind of transitions over to racing as well a little bit you know when you look at it because it's like uh i had to kind of take a step back and and say okay you know i'm a little bit out of my element and kind of had had to admit it to myself so uh, you know, I just listened to what all these pros were saying. Obviously, they know what they're doing. So uh, I just listened to them, and it helped me out so much. And by the end of the weekend, you know, I wasn't able to keep up with them, you know, doing all these triple backflips and all this crazy stuff that they're doing. But I was making it down the mountain pretty good and everything and having a blast while doing so. So it was definitely a lot better than the first day when, you know, you're falling a bunch of times and trying to struggle to stand up. And, uh, you know, it's hard trying just mm -hmm. to stand up in the, in the snow that's, like, way steep. You're trying to, like, claw yourself out of it. And, you just burn all this energy and stuff. So it was uh, it was tough, but um, you know, like I said, I had a, a bunch of friends around me and uh, some great riders as well that, that helped me out. Well, I was gonna ask you, you know, how if you have snow and you're way steep in snow, how do you even ski? I mean, it's it, it was the hardest thing. So that's like it was it was pretty funny. Like the first yeah. day I showed up, um, you know, it's a lot different uh, technique wise than mm -hmm. than riding on like a normal mountain. You got to put a lot more weight on your back foot um, on the snowboard and. I didn't really get that at first, you know, you, you got to keep the nose up and my nose of the board kept digging in all this snow and I'm getting thrown head over heels and uh, these guys are all laughing at me and, you know, I'm tumbling down the mountain and uh, there's trees everywhere and, you know, I'm grabbing onto trees to try and pull myself to stand back up because it's so hard. But uh, by the end of the trip, it was so much fun. Um, you know, uh, the, the, some of the guys helped me out. They moved me back on the board a little bit, got, got my weight moved around and uh, you know, by the end of it, I just kind of caught up and was, was hanging pretty good. Well, one of the things I thought was interesting to you from your trip is that you literally had to take a helicopter to get onto this mountain instead of a traditional ski lift. So, <laughs> you know, when you're, you're planning a ski trip, what makes you decide to do something like that? Yeah, I guess I was, uh, I was kind of bored, you know, like saying, oh my gosh, what do I do in these, in these five weeks or whatever. So I called up, uh, called up my buddy who actually lives out in Tahoe and he's like a professional uh, snowboarding uh, filmographer and uh, you know photo guy and stuff and uh, you know I asked him I said where is a, a great place to go in in the middle of April when you know sometimes in the US you're starting to lose a lot of snow and stuff and he said uh, I know just the place but we got to go uh, up to Canada so I said all right cool and you know I just got, kind of followed along his lead you know he said you know was saying oh this place is on my bucket list and I had never heard of it before but um, the place was called Bald Face up in British Columbia, and it was awesome. Like, you go into, uh, you know, you cross the border and whatever, and then you take a, a, a shuttle up there, and you jump on this helicopter, and, and you're flying, and, and you go from, it was actually pretty green, um, you know, down at, like, uh, you know, lower altitudes and stuff, and then you're like, oh, I hope there's some good snow up here. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, you're up in, you know, the mountains and everything, and you're in the middle of nowhere. So, you know, luckily I didn't hurt myself, A, so I could, you know, be ready to drive here and, and next week at Dover or whenever uh, we get back on track. But, um, you know, I was worried about that. And then also, uh, you know, being in the middle of nowhere, you don't want to hurt yourself either. But it was uh, something that was pretty cool, pretty unique. You know, you, you're just surrounded by a great, great group of people and uh, a lot of fun. 
I'm sure your team owners were a little bit worried about you getting hurt too with you jumping out of helicopters. Yeah, I, I planned it on the early half of the break. I went as soon as the break started, so I said, all right, I, at least I got a couple weeks to heal up if I do hurt myself. So <laughs> I gave myself a little bit of leeway, kind of, in case uh, something was to happen. Well, you're getting back into the truck at Dover. Um, so what are your thoughts heading into the race? And for you, like having a break that long, what's that like for a driver to be out of the car for so long? Um, it's definitely pretty tough. You know, luckily, you know, myself being a rookie, uh, we are able to go and test. So, um, you know, trying to stay on top of it as well as, um, you know, trying to jump on the simulator every chance that I get. So that's, that's a big help, but it is something that's difficult. You know, being a rookie, you're trying just to stay on top of things and you get, you kind of get a ball rolling and then all of a sudden it's like you got a big break and you kind of got to reset and start over a little bit. But, uh, at least, uh, Dover is a place that I've been to before, uh, made a K and then start there a couple years ago. So at least I've seen the track before. So I'll have a, a little bit of experience going into there, but, uh, got a great group of guys around me at GMS racing and, um, you know, my teammate, uh, Johnny Sauter, I can always kind of go to him being the veteran and kind of ask him some questions and some pointers about the place and, and what I can, uh, you know, maybe already learn go going into the place. Now, this is your first full-time season in the Camping World Truck Series, driving the number 25. I saw you posted on Twitter that you were super excited about getting your first NASCAR t-shirt. So, you know, for somebody like you, you know, a rookie in the Truck Series, what's it like for you seeing your number on a t-shirt that people can buy? Yeah, it's, it's something that's really special and really cool. You know, you go to these racetracks and, you know, I grew up watching racing and, you know, I have so many different driver shirts from, you know, Jeff Gordon, Dale Jr., uh, you know, all these different race car drivers. Um, Tim Richmond and stuff and you know I have all these shirts and now to know that you know I kind of got my own shirts that people can go out there and buy is something that's pretty special and I'm sure seeing some fans wearing them around in the in the garage and stuff will be even more so so uh, just really looking forward to it and, and having a, a strong rest of the year. You mentioned Tim Richmond who has was drove the same car number that you drive now do you did you choose that car number because of that? Yeah, he's, uh, you know, definitely somebody that I'd say I'd look up to, mm -hmm. uh, you know, for on and off the racetrack. He was, you know, definitely one of the best on the racetrack, and he seemed like he was always trying to have fun off. And, uh, you know, it's funny, you kind of look back on some of the things that he did, and, you know, he, he actually lived in Fort Lauderdale on a boat and stuff, and you kind of look at some of the things I do being from South Florida and, uh, you know, always out boating and, you know, just trying to have a good time and, you know, if we're not at the racetrack, still do something fun away from it. Well, Dover is a very tricky racetrack, and but I mean, you should be accustomed to that. You know, you've been doing some crazy adrenaline pumping stuff. So, what are your thoughts heading into the Monster Mile? I'm definitely looking forward to it. You know, one start there in the K&N Pro Series. So, uh, it was a, a tricky weekend. The one weekend that I was there, we had, it just rained the whole time, and uh, pretty much the first lap I saw the, of the place was the green flag. So, uh, hopefully, I can get get a little bit of practice time when we're there this go around. But uh, it's definitely a, a really fun track. You know, the banking makes it a lot of fun. Uh, you know, you're just driving off into the corners and stuff. So hopefully we'll, uh, we'll bring a, a good 25 uh, Performance Plus motor oil truck to the track and see what we can do at Dover. Well, we will see at Dover International Speedway. Catch Dalton and the rest of the Camping World Truck Series when the series returns.